This is Raptor News. Did you know that when you stated, I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, you signed a verbal contract with the devil, and at the end of that contract, you will burn in hell. We prove all things by the scriptures. At the end of that contract of accepting Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior, you are going to be destroyed and burned in hell. Again, all the scriptures is going to be laid out like you see them. All the information I got is going to be laid out on the page. You can read along with me. You can do research why I am reading it to you. And you can verify every word that I say. I am not going to say anything unless I can prove it and back it up by scriptures. You are going to hell for accepting Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior. Most of you Christians don't even read. You do not know what your religion is. Neither do you know what it entails. Romans 5, 6. Christ died for the ungodly. Ungodly mean atheists. In Greek, atheos. Are you an atheist? Then Christ didn't die for you. Atheos mean godless, ungodly, without God. Right? And then it states in Romans 5 8, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. <coughs> what is a sinner? It is an offender of God. You offended God. It is you sinful. That means you constantly breaking the law. Right? It is chata in Hebrew, which means you are a criminal in God's eyesight. You are counted as guilty. You are an offender. You are the wicked. And he already states, I told you at the end of this contract, you're going to burn in hell. I'm going to prove everything with the scriptures. I pray that you have some patience with me. I pray that you believe today and get out of that fake ass damn religion with these fake people lying and deceiving you. Today you are going to learn the truth about Christianity. So right after the Bible states strongly that Christ died for the ungodly sinner, it goes and says this, John 9, 3, 1. Now we know that God here is not sinners. John 9, 31. We know that God here is not sinners. There are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. These three are one and in agreement with each other. If they in agreement with each other, if the head, God, don't hear sinners, then why would the body and the spirit? If they are in agreement with each other, you got deceived into a false religion. God don't even hear sinners. Neither did Christ die for them. Hebrews 10, 26 is telling you the same thing. For if you sin willfully after you have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for your sins if you are purposely sinning. Some of y'all don't even know what sin is. Watching that dirty movie, that was sin. Masturbating, that was sin. Hanging out with bad company, that was sin. Doing drugs, that's sin. Going to the club, that's sin. Stripping, that's sin. Right? Fornication, that's sin. Adultery, that's sin. Being homosexuals, that's sin. All of y'all burning in hell. God don't even hear your prayers. There is no such thing as a sinner's prayer. God don't hear them. And then what? There is no more sacrifice for your sin. That means Jesus dying on the cross don't work for you. If you don't know what that means. He was supposed to be the what? The sacrifice? 1 Peter 4, 18. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear then before God? The Bible directly tells you 
where these people that Christ supposedly died for. Didn't he die for the ungodly and the sinner? Let's go back up to it. Here's the sinner. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, right? And Christ died for the ungodly, right? But the Bible is clearly telling you, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Then the Bible straight up tells you where you will appear. It starts with 2 Peter 2, 9. Then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to keep the unrighteous under punishment to the day of judgment. So the first thing y'all going to be is under punishment until the day of judgment. 2 Peter 3, 7 is going to complete where you're going to be. But by his word, the present heavens and the earth are being reserved for fire. Meaning you're going to be left on this earth and burn up. Being kept for the day of judgment for the destruction of the ungodly people. You are going to be destroyed. Believing that lie that Christ died for your sins because you are ungodly sinners. You're going to be under punishment until the day of judgment. You're already suffering. You don't get it, huh? I'm making you get it if you're going to have some patience. Now, how does Christ dying for your sins actually damn work? Because, again, you got suckered into a bad contract with the devil that stated that if you accept Jesus Christ, which is an idol God, how do we know? Because idolatry is the worship of anything except the creator of the heavens and the earth, the eternal God. And Christ is not the eternal God because how did he die on the cross? Right? So if you're worshiping Christ, the God of the flesh, the word, your ass is going to hell. And it states, and watch this, it's more than, than what we're going to read right here. This is just the first. We're going to read 15. That if you shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's the first thing you have to do. The second thing you have to do, Mark 16, 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Now you got to believe that he was raised from the dead and confess with your mouth and be baptized. That baptism is not going to happen if you don't believe. John 4, 48. Then said Jesus unto him, except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. So unless you see signs and wonders, anybody seen those miracles? No, you haven't. No, you haven't. Then how can you believe? You got to believe and be baptized. The only way to believe is you see signs and wonders. Unless you saw the signs and wonders, you won't believe. So most of y'all going to hell right away, right now. Y'all ain't even finished. We only on number two. Remember, we going to 15. Romans 6, 4. Therefore, we are buried with him by the baptism into death. You're not going to be in the book of life. You're buried with Christ into the baptism of death. You signed the deal with the devil. He is the first begotten of the dead. Meaning what? God is the God of the living, not the God of the dead. Y'all are suckered into a bad contract with the devil. And that, that contract is being preached by these bastards going around calling themselves preachers and pastors. Right? Matthew 18.3 and said, Verily I say unto you, the third thing you have to do, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. How do you be innocent like a kid who don't know nothing about sex? How are you going to erase that out of your mind? Who don't know nothing about the perversions that y'all learn? Don't know nothing about drunkenness and weed smoking and homosexuality and everything that y'all do? How are you going to erase that out of your mind? You ain't. You're going to stay perverted till you die. There's no way in, in the hell y'all can keep this contract with this devil. Matthew 5.20 For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. So you Christians ain't getting into heaven unless you can dig these scribes and Pharisees up out of the grave and, 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 and be shown their life from beginning to end so you know how righteous they were. Because there's no way you are going to be converted into a child 
There is no way you're going to be buried and baptized into death. There is no damn way you're going to know how righteous the scribes and the Pharisees actually were. There is no way you in a religion that is deceiving you right off the back. Now you got five things you're going to do. Remember we got ten more. John 3, 5. Because they suckered you in. All you have to do is accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, right? And then once you get in, now they're giving you a bunch of impossible things to do. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. What did that mean? It means that unless you already receive the Spirit at birth and Gentiles don't, you can't get in. Unless you are born of the living waters, you ain't getting in. All Gentiles then would not enter into the kingdom of God according to this. No matter how much you believe Jesus died for your sins. You ain't understanding your religion. We're going to prove everything with what? The scriptures. So I don't say one word unless I'm going to do what? Back it up by the scriptures. You in a contract with the devil. Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Is it the will of God to accept Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior? Somebody find that in the Old Testament. Because the will of God is written in the law and his commandments and his statutes and decrees. And in those decrees, there is nowhere in that that states to accept Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior. And he's also saying that even though you confess Jesus with your mouth, you still ain't going to enter into heaven because he lied. You're dealing with the devil. He just said, if you confess his name with your mouth, that, th that Jesus is Lord. And you believe in your heart that God, that God raised from the dead, you're going to be saved. And Jesus himself is saying, you ain't going to be saved unless you do what? Obey the commandments. Do the will of God. Mark 10, 24. The religion is already confusion then. And God is what? Not the author of confusion. But Jesus answered again and said unto them, Children, hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God and then what is riches it ain't that you're rich he didn't say you're rich he said you trust in money you trust in gold you trust in silver you trust in your knowledge you trust in your fancy car to get you from there you trust in this and God is saying if you trust in your car that is gonna get you from point A to point B you trust in that plane it's gonna safely land if you trust in the money the money is going to pay the rent and, and keep you going when God gives you your daily bread. Anybody who trusted in material things, inanimate objects, and the creation, you don't enter into the kingdom. And everybody trusts in medication. You trust in so many things, that's not God. Right? You trust in riches. Matthew nineteen twenty four, And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. What does that mean? <coughs> a, camel, uh, a camel ain't ever going through the eye of a needle. That means nobody rich is ever getting into the kingdom. A camel will never go through the eye of a needle. They suckered you in. We on number eight right now. They suckered in, you in to this saying, all you have to do is accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You need to call them on their shit and say, hey, look, now I got to be baptized. Now I got to be born again. Now I got to be born of water and spirit. Now I got to turn into a little child. Now I can't be rich. Now I can't trust into these things. It's a big process, sir, that you didn't tell me about when I signed that first contract, a verbal contract with you, you devil. Let's keep going, because y'all got suckered and lied to. I didn't go back again 3,000 years and write this. These are not my words. I'm not doing anything just to provoke and piss Christians off. Y'all silly like that, man. And I have to actually say these words, because you silly mofos will actually believe I'm just saying things to piss you off, to irritate you, to scoff, and we read directly out of the book. The book itself is scoffing you. 
You was a sucker believing a bad deal. And now you want to get mad because you got suckered into a bad deal. And you ain't going to possibly do none of this stuff. None of y'all is doing any of this. That means all of you Christians is going to hell. You got suckered into a deal with the devil. And you didn't even know all of the, 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 the details of the contract. Acts 14.22 You must go through much tribulation in, to enter into the kingdom of God. You got to go through pure fucking hell. Are you going through pure hell? Most of y'all is in Christianity any damn way, huh? Believing in this garbage. Ephesians, you might qualify for that one. Ephesians 5, number 5. For this you know, no whoremonger. That means if you commit fornication, you ain't getting in. I thought all you had to do was confess that Jesus Christ was Lord and Savior. No unclean person. Did you know that Leviticus says that all Gentiles are unclean? And that if a Hebrew touches a Gentile, he becomes unclean? Did y'all know? Do you know? Do you know? Y'all don't know the religion. Nor covet this man. Do you want something that somebody else got? You want to be like somebody? Who is an idolater? Do you know that the worship of Jesus Christ is idolatry? The worship of anything besides the creator, God, the eternal God, is idolatry. Did you know that? And here they got you accepting this idol God as personal Lord and Savior. Got you praying in his name and got him before your God. Have no gods and no graven images. And that's what y'all got. Has any inheritance in the kingdom of God? Y'all ain't going to heaven. You got suckered into going to hell. You ain't reading the contract. I'm reading it to you. You don't even like what I'm reading. You said you love this book, but you don't. Galatians 5.21 Are you envious of anybody? Tittying envy, ass envy, penis envy. Murderers, did you kill anybody? Were you ever drunk? Drunkenness mean high. Reveling and such like. You are not going to enter into the kingdom of God. You shall not inherit the kingdom of God if you do any of these. That's a part of the deal. You don't know what the deal is. First Corinthians 15, 50. Now this I say, brethren, that the flesh and blood, which is what? Gentiles cannot inherit the kingdom of God. You got to be born of the spirit. And that's a literal birth, not I'm born again. So they try to lie to these Gentiles and say that if you get baptized into death and baptism in Greek is just dunking. If we can dunk you in the water, then you're going to be raised up and the spirit is going to descend on you when the book clearly tell you that flesh is always flesh and spirit is spirit. It is not interchangeable. You can't become the spirit. You are what you are. You are how you were born. And flesh and blood do not enter the kingdom. So if you look in Revelation, it's going to tell you that there are 12 gates to heaven. And there are 12 angels at those gates. And inside, written in the book of life, on each gate is the names of Hebrew Israelites, not Gentiles. Because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. I don't care if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You are in a cult, and you know you are. 1 Corinthians 16, no, no thieves have you stolen, no covetous, no extortioners. You ain't entering the kingdom. No, you're not the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Well, I'm righteous. Do you even know what righteous mean? Well, let's look into the strong concordance again. Ain't that what y'all believe in? Is violators of God's commandments or laws, it is the sinful. Sin is the transgression of the Torah. Everything keep leading back to obey the Torah, don't it? I'm not making it up. We all reading this together. That means that you ain't getting around the law. And the last one, Matthew 19, 17, which is number 15 things that you have to do. And I can go in there and I can do 30 easily. But if thou want to enter into heaven, keep the commandments. Because if you don't keep the commandments, you're not entering into heaven. And all of this that we read, they are the commandments. All they wanted to do was sucker you in to get some more tithing money, huh? Sucker you in to, and pass that donation plate around 
They was looking for the masses. They was looking for the criminals. Hey, look, it's an easy deal. All you got to do is confess that Jesus Christ is your Lord and personal Savior. All you have to do is confess that lie and then keep that money coming. And that's all it was about, folks. And they telling you that the moment you break the commandments, you you are done deal. If you sin willfully, which is transgress the law willfully, you are not entering into the kingdom. Getting thirsty, hold on. So what else the what does the Bible actually state about the law? Matthew seven twenty three. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's law. Proving that what? You got suckered into Christianity, and then if you keep reading and understanding, they're going to bring you right back to the Torah. Matthew, and if you don't go by the Torah, you're going to hell. Get away from me if you don't go by the Torah. Don't you know what that means? You ain't entering into heaven if you don't go by the Torah. If you sin willfully, there is no more sacrifice for the sins. Everybody who sinned without the law will die without the law. Everybody who sinned will be destroyed. Sin is what? Transgressing the law. You got suckered. Romans, I mean Matthew 13, 41. The Son of Man will then send his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all the causes of sin. Those who break the law, all you lawbreakers. Those who ain't going by the Torah. And they will throw them into the fiery furnace. At the end of the contract, a Jesus died for your sins, accepting him as personal Lord and Savior. This proves that if you break that law by accepting another God or putting that God in front of your God, the end of you is you're going to be thrown into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Romans 2.12, when you Gentiles sin, which is transgression of the law, you will be destroyed. No longer remains any sacrifices for sin. You will be thrown in the fiery furnace. You got suckered into a satanic contract, a lie. For what? For your money. Even though they never had God's written law. And the Jews who do not who do have God's law, you will be judged by the law. Says the what? New Testament. The Gentiles will be judged by the law and destroyed if they don't obey it. And the Jews will be judged by the law if they fail to obey it. Everybody is going to obey the law. And if you don't obey the law, Jesus Christ himself is going to throw you into the fiery furnace. Jesus Christ is going to say, I never knew you, those who break God's law. Y'all don't understand? No, y'all understand. You came to the knowledge of the truth and you got it. No, you was looking for an easy way out. That's all you was doing. I'm gay, so I'm just going to, I'm a sinner in need of a savior. I'm just going to wash it all in the blood of Jesus. Ain't you? No, you ain't. You're going to burn in hell at the end of that damn contract with the devil. Because God ain't never told you to make no contract and accept no God, no, no God of the flesh as your personal Lord and savior. And how can he die for your sins? Read this. Romans 6.23 For the wages of sin is death for all. 1 Peter 2.22 Christ did not sin or ever tell a lie. So how are you going to be destroyed? How are you going to die for your sins? And then we're going to find out the, the cold hard facts that as you sow so shall you reap. Those who lead into captivity will go into captivity. It's a balance system. Whatever you put in, you're going to get out. If you live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. The law states that God is the Savior and nobody else can die for your sins. And we're going to finish up with this. Ezekiel 18.4 Behold, every soul belongs to me, says God, not to Christ. You got lied and deceived in that New Testament for your spare change. Both father and son are mine. The soul who sins is the one who will die. 
If Christ did not sin, then how are you going to die for your sins? You're going to die for your sins, fool. That's what God said. And anybody who transgressed the law will be what destroyed and thrown where the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth because you went so much damn pain you fool you fool Leviticus 5 17 and if a soul sin and commit any of these things which are forbidden to be done by the commandments of God though he wist it not yet is he guilty he shall bear his own iniquity Christ ain't bearing shit and y'all know it y'all got deceived y'all got deceived he's coming to throw everybody who breaks the law of God into the fiery furnace he's going to tell you to get away from me because you broke God's laws you got damn deceived and you know it you shall bear your own fucking iniquity you sowed it, you're going to reap it. Jeremiah 31, 30. Instead, each will die for his own iniquity. All the prophets, Ezekiel, Leviticus, Jeremiah. We're going into Exodus next. Everybody going to agree. Except for your dumb ass. Because you can't get over it. That you ain't going to get no easy way out. Exodus 23, 7. Keep thee far from a false matter. And the innocent, which is Christ. Christ did not sin or ever tell a lie. And the innocent and the righteous slay thou not. This is the commandments. So how are you going to die for your sins? How did God send his only begotten son to die for your sins? God don't change. Somebody lied in the New Testament. Same motherfuckers who told you that if you accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you'll be saved. They lying ass motherfuckers. Verily, verily, I tell you, everybody who says to me, Lord, Lord, ain't getting saved, nigga. You got deceived. For I will not justify the fucking wicked, the ungodly sinner. You believe me, nigga, and you know you do. That's why you mad. You want to turn. You wish you never heard it, huh? But you will burn in hell if you didn't hear this. Acquitting the guilty and condemning the innocent. The Lord detests both of that shit. So how he going to send his only begotten son to acquit the goddamn guilty? And condemning the innocent which is Christ to death. When God said what? I detest that shit. Go look up detest because you morons probably don't even know what that means. Ezekiel 18.20 The soul that sinneth will what? Die for his sin. The wages of sin is death, nigga. The son shall not bear the iniquity, nigga. You easy going motherfuckers looking for an easy way out. Of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquities of the son. The righteous of the righteous shall be upon his self, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon his self. So if you want to live righteously, then you're going to benefit from your righteousness. If you want to live wickedly in sin, your ass is going to be thrown in the damn lake of fire. Deuteronomy 24, 16, Fathers shall not be put to death for their children, nor children for their fathers. Each is to die for their own damn sins. And Christ didn't come to damn save you. So stop believing a lie. No man can die for your fucking sins. The end.